Today I'm out in the garage today because I have a whole pile of old hard drives. Uh, these are various sizes, I think up to like 13 gigabytes, all of them IDE. Ancient, old, not useful anymore. I have computers with more RAM than these things store. So the one good thing about these old hard drives is besides the scrap aluminum, which you can recycle, is they contain some extremely strong magnets. These are neodymium iron boron magnets, also called rare earth magnets, or just simply neodymium magnets. And they are extremely strong. They make fantastic fridge magnets, or anything kind of useful for that. Um, so there's two of them in every hard drive. They're a little hard to get to because they are usually glued to these steel plates. And then in the hard drive enclosure, there's usually a whole pile of these... Uh, torque screws, which in my early days when I tore apart these old hard drives, I didn't have these torx bits. So I just usually took them to the drill press and, and drilled out the screw heads. But now since I have access to easy torx bits, I can usually take them apart pretty easily. So I just went through one of them and I came up with a pretty nice procedure for taking them out. And you should be able to recover these magnets out of here um, without breaking them. These look metal, but these are actually nickel plated. Neodymium iron boron magnets are actually a ceramic. They're very fragile. So if you were just to let them go on their own, they would shatter. So we have to be careful with them because we don't want to break them apart. Because if you do end up breaking them, besides the, uh, the ceramic being a little bit sharp, unfortunately this nickel plating also turns into a kind of like a razor's edge. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep them in one piece. So I'm going to go through, tear apart another one of these hard drives and uh, show you how I was coming up to take them out. I'm going to take this gutted one out of the way, introduce victim number two. So I'm going to cheat and use a power tool, because why not? I'm just going to go through the top. Take out the screws around the uh, around the perimeter. Now, unfortunately, that won't give you access to it. Um, just taking the screws out around the perimeter, which I'll show you later. We could go through the bottom. I could show you underneath, but it's really not all that fancy. Through the bottom, there's a, a connector that goes through the casing to the uh, the controller board. Controller board has the IDE interface and power circuitry. So we're going to ignore the bottom for now. But to get through this top, they always like to put a couple screws underneath secret labels in case people like to void their warranty. So there's one on this and one over here. So this is on the spindle and this is on the armature, which I'll show you what those do here. I know from experience on the other one, this was kind of glued together as well. So we're going to cut this aluminum foil tape around the bottom here. So the basic principles of these magnetic hard drives... Yeah, see? This top piece is actually glued on. Basic principles is um, you have a magnetic disc coated with a... This is actually an aluminum disc that's coated with a magnetic material. Some manufacturers use glass. Um, the material it actually doesn't really matter. It's the magnetic um, coating that they put on top of it that is the real magic. Then this armature moves across the disc and on it, it contains an extremely small uh, read-write head. Kind of like the same principles of a cassette deck. And um, this armature moves back and forth with this coil. So it works exactly like a speaker. They call this a voice coil, actually. Uh, it drives current through the, through the coil, which gives it a magnetic field. And then that magnetic field pushes off the magnets that are above and below it. When it gets into the right position, then the head can read off the disc, read off the data coming off the disc. Those are the basic principles of it. So 
what you saw here is when I pulled the lid off, this top piece kind of stuck to it, and that's because the magnetic. This is the uh, <laughs> this one is a really weird shape uh, neodymium magnet on the bottom here. So this lid is just aluminum, and this is uh, a metal carrier. Usually these are made out of steel that are probably nickel plated. And then the magnet is also here, nickel plated. And the magnets are almost always glued to the steel plate, which I'm going to show you how to get these off without uh, completely destroying it. Uh, unfortunately, we have to get to this bottom one here, though, but it's underneath all this stuff. So we got to get the armature out. I'm going to take Mr. Big Screwdriver. And this armature has a nice flathead slot in it, so you can be able to take that out. Now, it could be... Well, you could be nice and you could take these two screws out and you have to kind of peel this connector off, but whatever. We're just going to rip it off. Then we have this bottom plate, which just has two more of the exact same kind of Torx head screws. This is a little tight in here because it doesn't want to come off. There we go. Okay. So now we got our two magnets. Got to be careful when you put them together like that. You don't want to let them slap together. As you can see, this bottom one is extremely thick and the top one's rather thin. So we're going to have some pretty different magnets compared to the other hard drive which I tore apart, which was also a Maxter. I think it might even have been in the same capacity, but they used completely different magnet configuration. Uh, the other hard drive it came off came off with uh, two pretty much identical magnets, which is normally what I've seen in every other one I've tore apart. This one has two radically different ones. Um, on these particular drives also, there's a third magnet. Oh, take it apart. There's a third magnet here, a very, very small one. I'm not even sure if this is a neodymium magnet or not. What they use this for, though, is when you turn off the drive, the head will get parked. In this case, these drives park them in the middle of the disc. So when the drive spins down, then the drive heads slowly land onto the surface. Um, and from what I gather is why they did this, they have this other magnet here, so when the head comes back, it will magnetize and with this uh, stop, there's a stop on here so it can't swing too far, then this magnet will hold the head in this position. So in the case the uh, drive takes a sudden shock, like you drop it, when it's off, the head doesn't move. It stays stationary in its parked location. And... Uh, this magnet holds it there. I'm not sure if that's a neodymium magnet. I'm not going to bother recovering that since it's so small anyways. But uh, we're just going to go after these two. So let's go over the vise. And I'll show you what to do with these. Okay, to get these magnets off of these plates, there's two general ways to remove glue. And that's physical force, scraping, stuff like that or prying apart, or sometimes I used to uh, put these into a vise and bend the plate away from the magnet. The other way to do it is with heat. If you can heat up the glue enough, it'll soften right up and the magnet will come right off without any, without too much trouble. Let me get this into a position where I kind of like it. Not sure which end is going to give me leverage in order to uh, pry it off when the glue loosens up. I'm going to go with this end. So I'm going to put this into the vise to hold it for me. Then we're going to take a heat gun. Now, a heat gun is um, more than a glorified uh, hair dryer. It can go up to ridiculously high temperatures, up to, in this case, this one can go up to 1,000 degrees. And we do not want to get these magnets too hot. Um, any magnetic material has a property called the Curry temperature. And it's at that point, at that temperature, where the magnet will lose all of its magnetic properties. The material will, will uh, change properties, so you'll lose it. So if we get it too hot, we'll ruin the magnet, which is exactly what we're trying not to do. 
So I'm going to keep this onto a 500 degree temperature setting. It will never get this hot enough to 500 degrees, especially in this in this uh, garage, which is like 50 degrees. But generally, if you get neodymium magnets, my quick research shows anywhere from, I think about any more than I would say 100 degrees centigrade, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you could cause permanent damage to the magnet. So we're just going to try this thing at 500 so I'm not standing here all day waiting for it to, to heat up. And I'm going to take a, an infrared probe just to make sure I'm not getting too crazy hot on it. Um, I did two of these already, so I'm fairly confident. So even at right now, it's 65, which could have been warming up for me handling it right there. And I'm just going to keep this on here for a while. And uh, when it gets hot enough, hopefully that glue will then soften up. Then we'll be able to take a, a screwdriver such as this to, to pry on it just a little bit. There we are. All right. So now I got that about half off. I'm going to let that cool down a little bit before I touch it, since it's probably pretty warm. About 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So nowhere near enough to actually damage the magnetic properties of it, but it's warm enough to touch. I'm just checking to make sure it actually didn't peel off the uh, the nickel plating along with it. Doesn't look like it. They use a little bit different glue on this one than the other one, even though it's the same manufacturer. They they do it a lot differently. Ooh, that's warm. Yep. There's one magnet. With a little bit of the glue residue remaining on the back side, but I'm okay with that. There's no significant scrapes or scratches or anything, so one magnet down. This is, I think, the oldest one I have in my pile. I honestly don't know where this came from. It is a Connor 170 megabyte. This is IDE, but this is ancient IDE. This is back from probably the days where... Um, you had a fight with uh, the difficulties because the IDE was not a rigid standard in the beginning. This one, I'm not sure how many screws are in the top cover. I don't really feel anything through the labels. I'm going to see if it comes apart or not. Yeah, it does. This one might be the most unique of all the other ones I got. Yeah, it's about the same basic construction. They even this uh this I can confirm. There's a sticker on the firmware underneath it that says uh 1992. So it gives you the relative age on this one. This looks like it does have neodymium magnets, but it's a different configuration than what I was used to. And this one, you can easily see the read right head on it. It is massive. Two platter. And they are reading and writing on each side. So four heads. Very, very cool. You can see the... You see a lot of lines in the drive from probably where the head was riding along on the material. It's not a good thing, but I also want to take this controller board off completely, but I'll take that after I get the uh, the uh, magnets out of it. So let's take, oh, these are different size. No, oh, smaller. Yep. Ah, the whole magnets just slide out of the way here. It's getting caught on the rubber O-ring. It's using as an air seal. 
the magnets are inside of this separate carrier. Whoa, this doesn't want to come apart. These are look like uncoated neodymium magnets. <clears throat> So I don't think there's any, no, these aren't magnetic. It is these guys who are, these are uncoated. So they look like ceramic, but they're definitely too strong to be your standard, you know, black ceramic ones. Painted and worn on the edges. Interesting. They are definitely strong. Those are monsters. Okay. Good magnets. We'll go through the same. Careful. We'll go through the same procedure. I've been taking apart other drives, so I got a lot to, to heat gun. Okay, so what did we learn today? Um, mainly, don't use a drill press to remove the screws. That creates too much of a mess. And uh, heat guns are hot, and uh, needle nose pliers aren't toys. But if you do all that, you end up with quite a, quite a haul of neodymium magnets. These are uh, very powerful. I was actually probably shouldn't have put them in such a huge uh, pile like this, but if I need one, I can just pull them off. But I, you can actually even see the uh, the different orientations depending on their polarity. So very cool. All these hard drives I finally got through to get the good part, the good parts out of. Very excellent. So. Um, if you find a whole stash of old computers, don't immediately throw away the hard drive. Sometimes there's good things in them.